Imagine carrying 80 pounds strapped to your skull every minute, every day, for life. Now realize that burden isn't just uncomfortable, it's the exact reason your species is heading for extinction. That's the story behind the Irish elk, a colossal deer with antlers so immense, 3.65 meters across 40 kilograms of solid bone. They rewrote the fossil record and then erased their own future. These were never just moose with attitude, as 19th century scientists first guessed. Isotope analysis, CT scans, and bone microscopy from peat bog fossils lay out the real forensic evidence. But here's the twist. What killed the biggest deer wasn't predators, wasn't humans. It was the glory of their own antlers, nature's deadliest headwear. So why did evolution bet everything on an 80-pound crown that became a death sentence? Let's break down the true cost. Stand next to a mounted skeleton of Megaloceros giganteus, and the numbers get ridiculous fast. This animal stood 2.1 meters at the shoulder, over seven feet, eye to eye with an NBA center, and that's before you even count the antlers. Body mass? Try 540 to 600 kilograms, or about 1,200 to 1,320 pounds. That's heavier than a grand piano, or two full-grown grizzly bears stacked on a bathroom scale. But the real showstopper is the rack. A single set of antlers stretched 3.65 meters across, 12 feet from tip to tip. That's wider than the average family car is long and more than double the spread of any modern moose. Each antler, a slab of bone, weighing in at 40 kilograms, so 88 pounds perched on the skull, not counting the rest of the head. Picture balancing a 10-year-old child on each side of your head for months at a time, except the child can't squirm off and you can't set them down. Fossil measurements from museum collections repeat the same story. No other cervid, living or extinct, even comes close to this scale. Modern elk and moose look positively dainty by comparison, with antler spans that top out at half the width and less than half the mass. This isn't just a record breaker, it's a biological arms race in bone. The sheer size of those antlers didn't just make Megaloceros the undisputed champion of the Pleistocene fashion contest, it also locked them into a design that was equal parts trophy and trap. Every year, adult males would grow this entire structure from scratch, shedding it, then rebuilding it over and over, like clockwork. The result, a living monument to evolutionary excess and a burden that would push the limits of anatomy, metabolism, and eventually survival. The numbers are impressive, but the real price comes due when you look at what it took to build and rebuild nature's most extravagant headgear. Every spring, the countdown started. Megalocaros giganteus had just 90 days to rebuild a full set of antlers, 40 kilograms of bone grown from zero, using nothing but what the animal could strip from its own body and whatever minerals it could scrounge from the landscape. That's 120 grams of calcium every single day, the equivalent of drinking 30 glasses of milk except there's no fridge, and the only thing on the menu is whatever you can rip out of the ground or steal from your own skeleton. Microscope slides from fossil antler cross-sections lay out the timeline in perfect rings, fast, frantic growth, layer after layer, with bone tissue that looks more like hastily poured concrete than the dense, robust stuff you'd want holding up a 12-foot rack. Histology confirms what the numbers suggest, Speed comes at a price. The faster the antler grows, the more porous and fragile the bone becomes. It's the biological version of a rush job, and the deadline is non-negotiable. Miss rutting season, and your genes don't make it to next year. But the real forensic smoking gun is in the ribs. X-ray fluorescence scans of museum specimens reveal a seasonal pattern. During antler growth, the ribs become riddled with microscopic holes, like someone's been mining the skeleton for spare parts. That's exactly what's happening. Up to 80% of the body's available skeletal calcium gets mobilized and pumped straight into the antlers. For three months, these animals are borrowing against their own bones, 
hoping the nutritional payback will arrive before the bill comes due. Modern moose and red deer pull the same trick, but at half the scale and with less risk. Megalocaros pushed the system to the limit. If the forage was rich, lush spring meadows, calcium-packed aquatic plants, the debt could be covered. But if the season turned lean or the right plants disappeared, the deficit stayed on the books. The result? Temporary osteoporosis, brittle bones, and a body that's structurally compromised just in time for the most violent season of the year. It's a metabolic gamble with the highest stakes imaginable. Survive the growth spurt or collapse under the weight of your own display. Finite element analysis. Think digital crash test dummy for bones. Let's engineers and paleontologists stress test fossil antlers without breaking priceless museum specimens. When the modelers plugged Megaloceros antlers into their software, the results were blunt. The palmate, flat structure handled head-on shoving like a champion, but twisted sideways, and the stress lines lit up in all the wrong places. The biggest hot spots, clustered mid-palm and at the antler base, exactly where the real fossils show the most damage, Take the Dublin Natural History Museum's adult male, cataloged with a visible fracture callus at the left antler base. X-rays show the break healed, but the regrown antler never came out straight again. That animal survived its first bad fight. But every rutting season after, it entered the arena with a permanent mechanical disadvantage. The antler's weight now pulling off center, torque transferred straight to the skull. For a species where combat is a full contact sport, that's like boxing with one arm tied behind your back every single year. The German bog specimen, excavated in 2019, tells a harsher story. Both antlers snapped mid-tine, right in the zones predicted by the finite element analysis stress maps. No sign of healing, just sharp splintered bone and the unmistakable stamp of a fatal injury. Forensic taphonomy and body condition at death point to starvation in the weeks that followed. With both antlers crippled, the animal couldn't strip leaves or dig through snow, and the world's biggest rack became a death sentence. These aren't one-offs either. Survey enough museum collections and you'll find healed fractures in about one in five adult males, with fresh, unhealed breaks in another 10%. The digital models and the fossil record match up with unnerving precision. Every twist, Every fracture, every lopsided regrowth is a receipt for the price of, of evolutionary excess written in bone, paid in full. And the real damage didn't stop at the antlers. The next link in the chain, what happens when 80 pounds of bone plus a bad fight land all their force on a seven vertebrae neck? CT scans of Megaloceros fossils pull back the curtain on what those antlers did to the rest of the skeleton about 15% of adult males, one out of every seven, show clear evidence of trauma in the first three cervical vertebrae, C1 through C3, the part of the neck that acts as the main hinge between skull and spine. Some of these injuries are textbook compression fractures, classic signs of high impact force, traveling straight down from the skull. Others show bone fusion, where repeated trauma forced the vertebrae to knit together into a single immobile block. In one Dublin specimen, the atlas and axis vertebrae are so locked up that the animal's head could barely swivel side to side. That's not a minor inconvenience. For a prey animal, losing neck mobility is like taping a flashlight to the floor and hoping you'll spot the wolf before it bites. The numbers don't lie. This isn't a rare fluke or a freak accident. It's a population level hazard written in bone. Every rutting season, the same physics played out two males, 80 pounds of antler each, head to head, twisting and pushing until something gave way. Sometimes it was the antler, sometimes it was the neck. And if you survived the antler break, you might be left with a fused spine, a permanent blind spot, and a target painted on your back for every predator in the neighborhood. If you're into this kind of forensic breakdown, 
where bones become court records and every injury tells a story, subscribe to Fossil Forensics. Because the next piece of evidence isn't just about anatomy, it's about the world changing faster than evolution could keep up. Climate is about to turn the Irish elk's greatest asset into its final liability. Teeth and mud cores tell the story without a single word. In the enamel of megaloxerose molars, oxygen isotope ratios, specifically delta 18O values, take a nosedive right at the end of the last ice age. Between 12,900 and 11,700 years ago, those numbers dropped by about 2.5 per mil, which for anyone not fluent in isotope speak, means a sudden four degree Celsius plunge. For a mammal built for lush, temperate woodlands, that's like swapping your spring coat for a parka overnight and then realizing the pantry is empty. Irish bog cores back up the misery with pollen counts. Before the crash, birch and pine pollen made up as much as 70% of the mix. Then almost on cue, tree pollen collapses to 15% while grass and sedge pollen shoot up to fill the gap. The entire landscape flips from dense woodland to open tundra in less than three human generations. Lofnadorn's sediment layers record the moment. Forest vanishes, oh, grass takes over, and nutrient-rich browse disappears from the menu. This isn't a slow-motion change, it's a climate sucker punch, with woodland vanishing in under 300 years. The isotope and pollen records don't just hint at cooling, they lay out the timeline in hard numbers. The world that built the Irish elk's antlers evaporates almost overnight, leaving a calcium-hungry giant stranded in a land that can't feed its bones. Sexual selection doesn't come with a reverse gear. For hundreds of thousands of years, female megaloceros picked the males with the biggest antlers, and genetics ran with it. Generation after generation, the code for giant racks got stamped deeper into the blueprint. This is the evolutionary equivalent of a runaway train. Once the signal is set, the system just keeps building, even if the world outside is falling apart. Biologists call it the handicap principle. When a trait is so costly that only the healthiest animals can afford it, it's supposed to be an honest advertisement of fitness. But that only works as long as the environment stays generous. When the climate crash hit, the genetic machinery didn't get the memo. The forests vanished, the calcium-rich plants dried up, and the landscape turned to open, low-nutrient grassland almost overnight. Yet every spring, the same instructions fired off, grow the biggest antlers, no matter what. The result was a lethal trio, shrinking food supply, skyrocketing mineral demand, and predators waiting in the wings. Some paleontologists have floated the idea that the last Irish elk shrank by as much as 15 to 20 percent in body size to cope. But the fossil record doesn't back it up. Most specimens, even from the end, still carried the full, outsized antlers. The genetic feedback loop kept the trait locked in long after it stopped making sense. Evolution had built a monument to past success and then welded the door shut. And this kind of evolutionary trap isn't just ancient history, it's still happening right now to species we know. Evolution's blind spots aren't just ancient history, they're happening right now, in real time, to animals you know. Take African elephants in Mozambique's Gorongosa National Park, poaching pressure ramped up so hard that tusklessness in females doubled from 18% to 33% in just two generations. That's not a typo. Tuskless elephants were once rare outliers. Now, in some places, they're the new normal because the ones with tusks get shot before they can breed. It's evolution with a gun to its head. Canadian bighorn sheep are caught in a similar trap, only this time the weapon is a hunting license. Trophy hunters pay top dollar for the biggest horns, so the rams with the most impressive headgear get taken out before they ever pass on their genes. The result? In Alberta's Ram Mountain population, average horn size has dropped by 20 to 25% in just 30 years. Sexual selection spent millennia building those spirals, and human selection reversed it in a single generation. Then there's Atlantic salmon. Aquaculture breeding programs push for the fastest growing fish because bigger salmon mean bigger profits. 
but there's a hidden cost. These turbocharged fish show up to 30% weaker immune responses compared to wild stocks and their mortality rates can double under stress. It's the same old story. Select for one trait and you pay the price somewhere else, whether it's bone, horn, or immune cells. What links all these cases is the same forensic principle that doomed Megaloxeros. Selection can't see the future. What wins today might be fatal tomorrow, especially when the environment or humans change the rules overnight. Every adult male Irish elk carried up to 88 pounds of antler, rebuilt from scratch every spring, an unrivaled burden in the animal kingdom, documented by bone histology and museum specimens. For over 300,000 years, this extravagant display won battles and mates, but finite element analysis and fossil records show that the antlers pushed anatomy past its breaking point. When climate change hit, isotope and pollen data confirm that shrinking forests and poor nutrition made this trait fatal. Even as body size dropped by up to 20% near extinction, antler proportions stayed locked by genetics. Scientists still debate how quickly the last populations crashed and how much human hunting contributed, but the forensic evidence is clear. The same evolutionary force that built the Irish elk also destroyed it. Today, tuskless elephants and shrinking bighorn sheep horns prove the trap is real and still active. Evolution rewards winners until the rules change. The Irish elk's antlers stand as a permanent record of nature's double-edged logic. 